So here's the tools that I use. Have hatchet, lightweight and sharp. Got folding saw. carving knife made from a piece of a circular saw blade and a piece of apple wood for a handle. A little hook knife made out of the same circular saw blade and another piece of apple for the handle. And then a carving gouge for roughing out the inside. And then a sure form, a little hand sized sure form for roughing out the outside of the spoon. Then we got an old uh, fro for splitting and a mallet for banging on the fro and for banging on the uh, gouge. And then just a couple clamps. So that's it for tools. That's all you need. So I've got this nice piece of apple. Got it off a job the other day. Pretty big size, but uh, apple carves easy, so it'll make a nice spoon. Normally, would cut it to length, pick a nice length, look for a nice shape, look for any defects that would dictate where I can and can't get a spoon out of it. But uh, this one's kind of big, so I'm going to cheat. easier. Uh, yeah, it looks nice. So first thing, <clears throat> look for any cracks in the end here. Um, if they're small in the pith, it doesn't matter. I'm going to carve the pith out anyway. Uh, if they're bigger, and this is the end that I want to get the bowl of the spoon out of, I'm going to have to split it with the crack and get rid of it. So, this one has a small crack here. It doesn't have any curve to it really, so it doesn't matter which way I split it. If it did have a curve to it, I would try to split it along a plane that would split it straight, so to the side of the curve. If that makes any sense? 90 degrees to the curve. Um, that way I would get two blanks and both the blanks would be curved opposite and I could get a spoon out of each one. If I split it on the curve I would end up with one blank that was curved concave and another that was curved convex and a convex spoon spills everything out of it. It's no good so I split it 90 degrees to the curve I get two blanks instead of just one usable blank. Um, so here goes splitting it with the fro. Pretty easy. Now we've got two blanks. We get two spoons out of this. Um, this one is a little knot right here, which would come off anyway. It's got a bigger knot here, so this would be the handle end on this one. Set that one aside. This one is pretty fee, pretty smooth, pretty free of defects on that, so I'm going to use that one. So, I'm going to start carving it. This is going to be the handle end, this is going to be the bowl end. So, first off, I'm going to peel the bark off so that I get a better, truer sense of what the actual size is. So 
Plus sometimes there's old knots that are hidden under the bark. You can't see them. This way you can see what's really going on. small knot right there but I think that'll be shape. Now that's kind of deep, which could be nice for a ladle or something, but I like to make it just a little bit shallower, because especially with a spoon this wide, it holds a lot of stuff. And the deeper it is, the more work it is to it out, shape it. Plus I kind of like it when the, uh, the sides aren't vertical here. I like it to come in at a nice angle to the outside here so it, uh, I don't know, I think it just feels more balanced. Good for a rough out. Now for the handle. I'm just trying to get rid much material as possible to hatch it. Save myself time and energy later. While also trying not to chop my fingers off. Which so far I have not done. This one, the pith, is basically pretty close to right down the center, so I'm gonna sneak up to it on either side. Keep it, keep it in the center of the handle. Makes for a nice pattern. And you can see the color here in the heartwood. It's kind of cool. And then shape this shoulder. Spoon shape around. Bring that in. Curve it over. Okay. 
I got to get rid of the pith on the inside here. Ruin it. 